uh, panel discussion over there and I, I was following through with some of the uh, discussions especially towards the last end I, and i think it brings um, nicely to the topic today i think this is a part mm. of a several series and i can go on talking about this and uh, maybe vincent you owe me 30 minutes of a time on the next session and i'll commit to that but uh, today i think uh, what i want to say, share i guess is around banking in today's digital age and uh, you know maybe uh, what i want to share is that fresh out of the digital banking uh, framework that was issued by bank negara i think last six months you have heard about um, a lot of players banks and non-banks uh, applying for that and uh, what i thought is to share the other perspective of you know uh, the incumbent banks what should they be looking at and doing i mean given that you know you're going to have five new licenses been issued uh, in Malaysia come uh, next year, quarter one next year. And by, by end of 2022, you're going to see some of the uh, licensees start launching that. So, uh, and, and I know just I thought to start off with interesting to share a survey that we did with the banks in APEC uh, in terms of where they are in their digital journey, right? And, and we've been doing this survey from 2010 and you see progressively where, you know, the, the, uh, the percentage of not considering and seriously considering has gone off by 2018 and and the 2020 survey was done just prior to uh covid and uh what you would have seen is that 50 percent of them have started the journey and uh, the other 50 percent are into wave two looking at more complex uh more differentiated offerings and everything and i bet you uh 2022 when we run our survey again uh, that result would definitely uh change significantly given that uh you know covid and and um the the impact of covid has has drastically changed the mindset not only the consumer but the banks as well uh, but you know one of the interesting part that i thought we ought to share is that i think when we look at the overall digitization approach uh, and effort and the question around you know have you seen quantifiable benefits to your main business i mean about 45 percent uh, reporting that you know it's below the business case so the question is that look yeah you're doing digitization but is that giving you the right return mm, about 45 percent are saying that mm, below so that's one interesting part the second uh, part from that survey was that uh, most of the banks have digitized the distribution and operations but uh, have pretty much stayed out from the creating a new digital business model uh, and what i mean by that is we, we see we hear a lot in terms of digitization around customers around distribution you you hear about apps rm workbench omnichannel robo assist advisory uh, apps or on the other side a lot of rpa ai credit automation but in terms of somebody driving new business model i think that's that's what something that we are not seeing but we do expect i mean we heard from azam and and uh, and also we do expect uh, from from the industry uh, in response to the new digital bank that's coming on board uh, some banks would be looking at, at creating that and what do i mean by that D digital business model is essentially uh the the journey for incumbent uh, essentially there's no single right or wrong model uh and and if we look at that and in base of our analysis of the banks i mean there's essentially three kind of uh, uh path that uh, we see the incumbent banks taking one is on the left where evolutionary model where existing banks uh, are digitizing the entire bank in an evolutionary model so they're building and they're future proving the entire bank uh you know they're, they're changing taking the whole journey together then you have the middle group where uh you know they continue with the effort of digitizing the existing uh products and services but they're also looking at launching a separate uh brand uh with the view of eventually you know they may converge or they may leave it separate and some of the uh, well-known ones would be the dg bank by dbs frank ocbc uh, uh today by tomorrow bank by by uob just to mention a couple a few of them in this region right and then you have the third model where uh the 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 existing banks are keeping the lights on that means running the existing business but they are creating a separate uh digital uh business model uh, build up from bottom to top and with the view of uh launching it scaling and eventually absorbing that uh commerce bank and m bank as just a couple of examples that i could give on on that uh kind of journey where incumbent banks are taking through that 
but you know, through this effort, we have seen five, uh, but they are not mutually exclusive business model that uh, emerged from the incumbent banks. Uh, there are some banks that are looking at, you know, uh, digitizing universal banks. So they are universal bank. They are focusing on digitization of customer touch points, operations, uh, looking to serve all segments, uh, no differentiation in terms of uh, products and services across any of the se segments at all. Then you have the, the likes of, uh, you know, Digibank and Frank uh, OCBC, where they are targeting specific uh, segments and and the, the purpose of them so for example digibank they launched in um, india and indonesia simply because i mean they looked at it as a different market where they do not have significant presence they decided to launch uh, a, a digital only value proposition then you have the likes of line uh, which teamed up with uh, hana bank to launch a capital light bank where they don't hold a banking license uh, but they do the sales and distribution the back end is taken care by 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 the uh, KB HANA Bank as well. So that, that's the other model that we've seen. Uh, there are also banks that are going down the open platform players where uh, they're creating a value proposition for bi-directional access to banks, data processing and capabilities, uh, focusing on encouraging innovation, differentiated proposition, and they are working with various ecosystem players to create multiple uh, offering, not necessarily on their platform, but could be on their partner's platform as well. And finally, is the utility bank, what we call as a utility bank model, where uh, Standard Chart uh, is one of the, with the Nexus platform, you know, provides white label banking services to banks and non-banks, uh, focusing on leveraging scale to reduce cost to serve. So th these are the five uh, dominant models that, that we are seeing uh, in the market, right? And, and essentially, this bank model uh, created uh, either to grow the existing business because they are seeing um, players, uh, new entrants that chipping into the existing uh, business today, or uh, they're creating a model to attack a new segment uh, to go after. So Frank, for example, in OCBC was you know created to go after the younger segments as well. Uh, or third is attacking new markets, Digibank by DBS, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, attacking India, Indonesia, for example or looking at non-banking revenue streams, totally looking at, at differentiated offerings uh, that could come in place as well. So banks are selectively using one or more of these models for specific segments and markets. And you know the ones that are delivering strong performance across traditional digital business and uh, digital economy metrics are being rewarded. So here are the, the kind of where we on the right hand uh, of, of this uh, slide is the traditional banks where you know we looked at their uh, value uh, and and if you look at the right left hand side th the ones that are actively in digital i mean their future valuation is clearly out of i mean out of the uh, uh, horizon right i mean you look at netflix 93.6 percent future value in, in the sense that a market is valuing the potential earnings of of these uh, digital players uh, and if you look in the middle, I mean, just a couple of examples, these are not exhaustive. Uh, the likes of SCB, DBS, which went uh, quite aggressively in the digital bank, digitization and the digital journey, clearly the market is uh, kind of rewarding them and, and, and kind of valuing their, their future in terms of seeing their future value and, and rewarding them in that sense. So I think that the takeaway from this is that the banks that are uh, going through the journey and and making it clear to the market and showing results uh, are seeing that in their in their stock prices as well and and the leaders that deliver success are measured in a different way where traditionally if you look on the left hand side traditional banking metrics roe net income interest margin loan growth i mean this is what you if you pull any of the annual report you will see uh, these metrics in their annual report but what we are seeing is that more and more uh, for those um, banking digital examplars such as BBVA, DBS, you will see a lot more of uh, digital business metrics such as percentage of digital sales, percentage of digital transactions. So more and more of these uh, elements of uh, metrics are coming into the play as well for the, the banks that are going aggressively in, in this space, right? But if you look more and more on the right hand side, uh, players like Facebook, Google, Grab, uh, uh, Line, for example, I, I mean, 
they are being measured from a share of trust, share of mind, and, and what uh, as as what a lot of people are saying that data is the new oil. Uh, that's the kind of metrics that a lot of the players are being uh, measured against the new new digital players. And and in fact, in, in the digital banking space. Uh, in, in UK, for example, there's 40 over uh, new banks. Uh, a lot of them, are, 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 you know, if you use the traditional banking metrics to measure their performance, they're clearly behind uh, the traditional incumbent players. But where they are gaining a lot of traction and, and investment is simply because the market is valuing them from the metrics that we are seeing on the right hand side, share of mind, share of trust, and, and the data and the ability to pull in the ecosystem uh, players and but I think just the second last slide that I have is, is respective of the path and the journey of successful bank have some common elements essentially the ones that do well are uh, simply people the incumbents that are focusing on customer uh, proposition what's the value that you're providing what's your CVP and, and you know what are you providing differentiated experience for your customer and uh, they're looking at simplification how cost take out and reinvestment and uh third is around you know translating their strategy into execution there's a lot of players we see out there that that have you know great strategy but challenge is coming to the execution how do you translate that vision uh, of, of providing that seamless customer experience to actual implementation itself and you know and what we do see for the incumbents as well is that it's not a binary choice it's not you know uh, you know doing is it doing physical versus digital it's you need to do both but you need to consciously balance between digitizing your channels your operations and creating business models against uh, your existing business as well so it's basically fixing the basics uh, but also going to new grounds and uh, the, the, the biggest challenge when we, we, we spoke to most of them and in a survey is that I guess, you know, a lot of them, the successful one has been able to focus below the iceberg. What we say is that, you know, they've layered the technology stacks that enable them to quickly respond to the market, uh, roll out products, product, innovative products quicker than their, their peers and their competitors, right? And they use a lot of analytics and start leveraging on, on cloud ready uh, stacks as well. And finally, it's around clear responsibilities and, and different set of thinking. I mean, this is a common challenge, right? Do you, I mean, in a lot of conversation that I've been having, do I create a separate unit within the existing organization or do I totally spin off so that I, I get that uh, digital native culture as well? And the ones that have been successful have been able to balance this uh, quite well, I would say. And that that's essentially it, Vincent, uh, from my side. I mean, I know I have to rush through that uh, and, and you know, I probably will come for another session when, when you organize the next one and, and share a lot more thoughts around that. We, we'd love that. And thank you for like kind of really crystallizing the approach of what the incumbent banks uh, are doing in this space. I know you have a hard stop of at 1225. So before you go, maybe we have time for one question. Um, I saw on your slides there, so you, you kind of categorize five uh, different types of approaches that incumbent banks are taking in response to this. Right? So I'm just curious because in Asia, we're seeing a lot of uh, consortium models. So where does the consortium model fit into these uh, five categories? So, so the five categories essentially is, I mean, let me just bring you back to, I think you mm. were referring to this, right? Yeah, yep, correct. So I, I, I don't think so. The, 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 the ecosystem player and the play in the ecosystem, I think the ones that are consciously going out and, and playing with that are the open platform players where, where they're leveraging, they're bringing in uh, the, the ecosystem players into that. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, it doesn't preclude all the models actually, I mean, we have seen in the market um, involve the ecosystem players and in fact I mean this is one common theme that we're seeing in the, in the, the banking industry as well is that I mean there's coming to a realization of four or five years ago when fintech started I mean the conversation was they're going to eat your lunch and then uh, uh, two years ago it's like can we sit down at the same table because you know that that's it's not like you know we're going to eat lunch actually we complement but now mm. I'm seeing that both are coming to a landing kind of like you know actually we need each other to win-win right because there, there are cer mm. certain advantage that you hold today and there are certain things that the fintech brings to the table as well so uh, in all the five models in fact I don't think so that there's a prevalent it's just a slightly shift in terms of how the thinking is uh, but but 
all of them requires ecosystem players to to kind of mm. uh, bring the full bear to the customers and, and you know customers today wake up not thinking that you know i'm going to do banking right they want to I, i'm go, i mean like yeah. grab became synonymous like i want to i want a car i want to i want to transport and, and by virtue mm. of that you, you do a grab right so similarly eventually is you want to buy something hence you need to do a payment so but for you to make sure that you are in the whole life uh, style uh, ecosystem you need different players not only the banks thanks for that shankar so what i'm sensing you're saying is that the narrative has shifted from fintech is going to eat your lunch now it's more like let's have lunch together lah. yes <laughs> absolutely and and, and 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 there's a lot a lot of buffet out there that we can share together so I, I presume that that's the yeah. yeah, love untapped yeah, buffet. With that, um, thank you so much for sharing your yeah. insights and views thank with you. us. Take care, Shankar. We thank hope to you. have thank you again you. in our future session. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate all the time that you've talked. Uh, it's about one and a half hours, the session. We hope you found it as fruitful as we did. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we do have another session coming up next week. Um, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be informed. Next week, we'll be having the digital bank applicants instead of the incumbents to share their views. So we hope to see you there again. And um, take care and enjoy your lunch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for joining us. Take care now. Bye-bye.